You've convinced me. I'm gonna make Julia Child's cinnamon toast flan. Welcome back to Jamie and Julia. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. I just recently made the creme caramel recipe out of this cookbook right here. The way to cook. And in that video, I'm reading along to the recipe and I get distracted. My eyes kind of stray to the adjacent page. And I stop dead in my tracks. I can't believe what I'm reading. Cinnamon toast flan. It was in that very moment that I realized that I no longer, I no longer wanted the creme caramel. I wanted this cinnamon toast flan, but I had plans and I stuck to them. I made the creme caramel, it turned out great. No regrets, but I'm still standing here, still thinking about the cinnamon toast flan. Honestly, I was just gonna, you know, move on with my life until I read the comments in the video and it was apparent to me that I've now got a lot of you thinking about the cinnamon toast flan, the CTF. Personally, I can't stop thinking about it. I think you've convinced me. I think I've convinced myself. Something has to be done here. <laughs> so without further ado, here we go. You could call this a bread and butter pudding, but that title bespeaks nursery food to me. Besides, this is not a bread and butter base, but a cinnamon toast base, and the flan is baked in a shallow dish. This is the kind of first class grown up dessert that even a child will enjoy. Doesn't get much more beautiful than that. Shall we get started? This is what, six to seven slices of white sandwich bread. Three quarters of an inch thick, she recommends. Confirmed. This is just inexpensive white bread, you know, you can't have just one. A quarter cup of granulated sugar mixed in with two teaspoons of cinnamon. Aha. And with this little thing, whisk it. All right, she says on the rack of a broiling pan, I have the next best thing. Range the slices of bread onto the rack. Spread each slice with butter. I need roughly two tablespoons of butter for this whole little spread sesh. I mean, we've found this out in previous recipes, but Julia is a crust girl. Totally cool with me, I'm a crust guy. Cinnamon sugar here, she says to sprinkle it on top of each slice. Um, sieve me? Thank you. Sprinkle on an even coat of sugar cinnamon on top of each slice. This is living up to the hype already. All the sugar and cinnamon would be a bit overboard. There's a tablespoon extra. I mean, let's just take a minute here. It's going in the oven under the broiler until the sugar starts to bubble up, but it can't burn. Making sure, <laughs> so I gotta just keep my eyes on it, making sure nothing burns. Sugar starts to bubble, starting to bubble. Each slice into four triangles. Oh yeah. So as it stands now, the top part is fairly toasty, but the bottom part isn't toasty at all. When you have a recipe called cinnamon toast flan, you, you, you really wanna make sure that you, you, you have the toast aspect of it. Personally, from my um, perspective, I think that's very important. Why don't we just put each slice back on here? Maybe it would be wise just to give the bottom part a bit of a toasting as well, just to ensure that we're doing what we think we should be doing, even though Julia never stated to do so. You have a six cup baking dish, two inches deep, check. It's an eight cup baking dish, but it will get the job done. Oh, sh sh Now that's toasty. In my opinion, that is now toast. Smear the inside of this with more softened butter. Crowd in the toast triangles, sugar side up. See, she's even calling them toast triangles, so I think that was the right call. Just putting it together like a puzzle. We've run out of space. Should I be doing a second layer? I think so. All right, so we'll start with that, and if we have to scale down as we go along, that's no problem. Moving on, I think. Yep. Next up is the custard mixture. 
Prepare the custard mix according to the directions on the next page. Creme anglaise, custard sauce. We've done this before. We've done it before. We know what we're doing. Don't F it up. Give me a saucepan. Whisk the egg yolks. Whisk the egg yolks. Whisk egg yolks. Five egg yolks into a saucepan. So this is three quarter cup of sugar in, in fairly rapid spoonfuls. Add a little at a time, whisk it in. If it goes in all at once, the yolks are gonna turn grainy. Two to three minutes until it becomes pale yellow and thick. So I mean, those spoonfuls were pretty rapid, I would say. Okay, the mix is pale yellow and thick, perfect. Three and three quarter cup worth of milk. I'm specifically using whole milk today, and this needs to be hot around 887 milliliters, give or take. By the dribbles, stir in the milk. So I gotta make sure that, yellow, awesome. So with my hot milk, I'm just stirring it in, not beating it, because I want to avoid a foam on the very top of this. Even though it is pretty much foaming on top, I'm not too worried about it. Oh, classic. So we have a couple things going on. Firstly, the person that lives above me is vacuuming. So you have to just let them be tidy. Second of all, I've screwed up. <laughs> uh, remember when I said that we have to prepare the custard according to the directions on the next page, which is what I was following along to. These directions do not actually line up with the recipe over here where I'm supposed to add five large eggs and five egg yolks. But over here, the directions only mention egg yolks. So it's something that could be easily forgotten if you were following the directions on the following page, which is what I was doing. Anyway, what I haven't done is add the eggs. And I should have done that probably when I added the egg yolks. I'm assuming she has no mention of it. So uh, I've already dribbled in the milk. So I just have to uh, add the eggs post dribble. All right, this is what just happened. This camera right here, you just shut off in the middle of me doing all this. I lost all the footage. I don't know how much I lost. So let me explain what I did. That person's still vacuuming, which is great. They're gonna have a clean place in no time. So I took my five whole eggs, I whipped them up really good, and then I dribbled them in, dribbled, and then I just kind of stirred them in. It was a borderline beat in slash stir but I'm not too worried about the foam because I'm gonna get rid of that later. So all the eggs are in there, it looks great. I don't think we have anything to worry about. So let's get this over here onto a moderately low heat. Any questions? Okay, this is what we're doing. With a wooden spoon, I gotta stir this all over the bottoms and the sides of the pan, no stone left unturned. I wanna get it up hot, but I don't want it to simmer. And I cannot overheat these eggs or they're gonna scramble. So. Julia has these words of encouragement in the book. She says, you must have the courage. Just a sec. She says it better than I do. You must be careful not to overheat it and scramble the yolks. The yolks, that's exactly why I screwed up because she has no mention of eggs. I know it's for a different recipe, these directions, but that's why I screwed up. Anyway, you must have the courage to heat it enough so that it thickens. We do. So indication that this is almost ready are that surface bubbles begin to subside and almost at once you may see a whiff of steam rising. Keep it stirring. I've been doing this for like 10, 10 minutes, maybe a bit more. And uh, you can see that the eggs are starting to, eh, starting to scramble a little bit. Bowl and a sieve. Thank you. We'll need the other thing though. Perfect, thank you. I've done this before, so I know it's kinda gonna work, but yeah, this is an emergency to get this out of here because some of the eggs are getting a bit, as they would say, clumpy, scrambly, whatever you wanna call it. Just get it out of there and it's going through the sieve, so that's good. I know I would have to redo this if it tasted like scrambled eggs, but it still tastes like custard. Mmm. And it went through the sieve and it's nice and smooth now. So I think we dodged a bullet. Make sure it coats the back of a spoon. I feel like that recipe could have been just a little bit more um, user friendly. Add in a teaspoon of vanilla extract. 
It's smooth, it's not grainy. Ladle half of this custard sauce over top of my uh, cinnamon toast. Yeah. I need to let this sit for five minutes while the toast absorbs it. Booyah! Five minutes later, ladle on the rest of the custard. I think this is what's going on. It's my interpretation of what's going on in the cookbook. That's the best my brain can offer. Secondary baking dish in the preheated 350F lower third part of the oven. And then I got boiling hot water. I'm gonna pour it into my secondary baking dish so that it comes halfway up my main one. Baking for 25 to 30 minutes. And she says to regulate the oven heat during the baking so that the water in the pan never actually comes up to a simmer. Because if it does, then the CTF's gonna become grainy and you know, that's terrible. That's gonna ruin what was otherwise a really good day. So you don't want that. Keep your eyes always on it. Looks good. Not simmering. I hear ya. So here's the deal. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> uh, no idea. It's hard to gauge when flan is done. This is the same issue I had with the creme caramel. It's happening even more so with this one. In the center, if I poke it, there should be a few custardy bits clinging. I mean, it just does not even look cooked. If I stick a toothpick in around an inch from the edge, it should come out relatively clean. This one still comes out relatively not clean. My gut is telling me don't put it into the oven any longer. Just let it, however long it's gonna take, it will, it will set. I have faith. I know it. I can feel it. Move on to these optional accompaniments because I'm going to exercise one of these options. Either strawberry or raspberry sauce, caramel, or cut up fresh fruit. And I've already made my decision. Clearly, we're going with the caramel. Ha ha ha. First and foremost, take the strawberries that you literally just put on the cutting board. Give them a rinse. Let's get the stem off. Haul them. Come over here. Food processor. Of course you have the option between a blender or this. I've opted for, I need three to four tablespoons of lemon juice. I have a cup of sugar right here and a quart of strawberries. Firstly, add the strawberries, half the sugar, and three tablespoons of lemon juice. So, freshly squeezed, if you, you didn't pick up on that. To start, two to three minutes like this. That was loud. All right, let's taste it. So add more sugar if you'd like. I would like, very much so. Let's add another quarter cup. And yeah, we don't need all of that. That's good. And shh, shh. Couple more drops of lemon juice. Once you made sure you woke up everyone on the floor and that you have sufficiently pureed the strawberry sauce, Remove that. Thank you very much. Um, I guess a quick bowl would be great. Sieve if necessary, if you want to remove the seeds and the seed residue. I I'm think it'd be- I'm not sure I understand. Pardon? Et voila. Order up. Only thing we can do is cut this sucker open and see what's going on in the inside. Whoops.
That's like the best thing ever, whether you're a child or an adult, that's gonna make you happy. It's made me incredibly happy because I am both. It's like French toast on steroids. When I was growing up, French toast was my all time favorite food. And uh, I think we've come full circle here <laughs> because this thing, you know, it's put itself back into the conversation. We gotta talk about this. Uh, you know, it's tart and sweet and mixing it together with this <laughs> and the spice and the toast is a masterpiece. I think it's safe to say we found something pretty special. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. The very, very bottom of this thing kind of looks like this. I think I baked this when it's all said and done around like 40 minutes. I'm saying around like 10 minutes longer than Julia recommended. So although it's kind of custardy on the bottom and flawny on the top, <laughs> It's, uh, it's the perfect combo. I wouldn't change a thing. I think it's better like this. I mean, this is the only time I've ever had this dessert. So, I mean, that's, I mean, no, it's the best.